Starring Denzel Washington, Francis McDormand, Alex Hassel, and Bertie Carvel in pivotal roles, the Joel directorial borrows from the tenets of German expressionism and presents a thrilling slow-burning tale of ambition and guilt. If you were looking for an explanation pertaining to the plot and ending of the tragedy of Macbeth, you've come to the right place. Spoilers ahead. This new black and white film from half of the Coen brother duo has proven to be acclaimed by critics and audiences alike for its lavish set, its magnificent feats in cinematography by Bruno del Bonnell and director Joel Coen's keen eye for visual aesthetics. Here is a full breakdown of the ending of Joel Coen's newest film The Tragedy of Macbeth. But before that, don't forget to like and subscribe. The Three Witches, in the beginning of the film, the audience is introduced to three witches. However, one seems to be on dry land, while the other two lie in the reflection in the water. They tell Macbeth that he will become king, and his companion Banquo's sons will be kings. The witches disappear into the fog, only to reappear as crows. The witches appear to be some type of ancient entity that haunt the title character, leading him down a dark road and paving the way almost for his inevitable doom. The witches show him a vision of Banquo's son Fleens as he warns him of Macduff prompting him to kill Macduff, and his family for concern of his livelihood as the visions say that he shall be harmed by no man born a woman. <coughs> not born of a woman, speaking of which, Macduff is the man not born of a woman as he has claimed that he was untimely ripped. What the audience can suggest from this is that whoever birthed him performed a C-section on his mother. Macduff was a threat in the prophecy that brought about the demise of the titular character and did so by cutting off his head in the final act of the film. Fleens and Ross to Scotland, in the final scene of the film, the Scottish nobleman Ross flees to Scotland with Banquo's son Fleens. This implies that when Macbeth's henchman killed Banquo, Ross spared his son's life when he was chasing him through the fields. The two ride their horse as a flock of crows surround the sky. These may be the witches as their prophecy will soon be fulfilled, and Fleens is intended to be king one day. Ross takes the crown and Macbeth's head and approaches Malcolm, who is now the new king of Scotland as he is King Duncan's eldest son. Later, we see Ross meet the old man, the weird sisters in disguise, and realize that he had been conspiring with the supernatural powers all along. The old man hands Fleens over to Ross, and we discover that the Scottish noble plans to take Banquo's son to court so that the witch's prophecy can come true. Thus, the late Macbeth's carefully planned political murders prove to be fruitless because the prophecy finds a way to make itself come true thanks to the king's inability to see past his greed and shame.